Okay guys, welcome to your friendly kinematics and dynamics class online. I'll be your host this evening. And what we're going to do is problem 610 in your book. This is one that has been assigned for this coming week. And it's a fairly interesting problem. So we'll take the opportunity to go through it now. The text of problem 610 I'll display for you here. Reads as follows because it's probably going to be difficult to read on screen. A standard 20 degree full depth spur gear has 24 teeth and a circular pitch of 0 0.7854 inches. Determine the working depth, the base circle diameter, the outside diameter, and the tooth thickness. We'll talk a little bit about those tooth thicknesses as that's something that we didn't discuss in class and that we're only going to touch on briefly. But first let's get started with the problem itself. So some of the basic things. This is problem. Six point ten. And we're doing this on the 7th of April 2013 we have a full depth spur gear with a pressure angle of 20 degrees the gear has as was mentioned 24 teeth and it has a circular pitch, which is the lowercase p, equal to 0 0.7854 inches. And you'll note that, as we've mentioned with inches, a thousandth is a generally acceptable, reasonable measurement to give values to a machine shop. A good machine shop will very easily be able to get into the ten thousandths for a lot of their cutting operations and their measurements. So this is the kind of value that you should give for English units. So the first thing we want to get was the working depth. And the working depth, if you take a look in your book, is noted as the sum of the addendums of the gears that are mating. In the interest of handling step two, step one being don't panic, we should probably do some of the easy things for this gear first so that we can then get into calculating the working depth. So we know, for instance, that the circular pitch is defined by a formula. It's equal to pi times the diameter of the pitch circle divided by the number of teeth. We also know that there is a relationship between the circular pitch and the diametral pitch. Since these are in English units, this is certainly an English gear, so the diametral pitch is a good thing to get. If you look back through your notes you'll find that the circular pitch multiplied by the diametral pitch is equal to the value of pi. So from these two relationships we can go ahead and calculate the pitch diameter and the diametral pitch. Solving this equation, the pitch diameter is going to be equal to the circular pitch times the number of teeth divided by pi. The diametral pitch, as noted, is going to be solved from this equation. So it's just going to be pi divided by the circular pitch. So 
So quickly solving that, in order to get the pitch diameter, I would multiply the circular pitch by the number of teeth and divide it by pi. If I go for the numerical solution, that tells me that my pitch diameter out to the ten thousandths place is six inches. My diametral pitch, pi divided by the circular pitch, and again if I get the numerical solution, that tells me that my diametral pitch is 3.999999999. I think it's safe to say that my diametral pitch is 4. So let's go back to the working depth. As I mentioned, the working depth is the sum of the addendums of mating gears. And I did mention to you and tell you and I believe show you that in your book there is a table, table 61, on page 428. And table 6-1 gives us many of the relationships for standard gear profiles. That may not be immediately evident, maybe it can't be read from the image on the screen, but if you look in your book you'll find that for 20 degree full depth teeth in volutes, whether it's a fine pitch or a coarse pitch, the addendum value is 1 over the diametral pitch. Therefore, A is equal to 1 over capital P, or 1 quarter. Since the working depth is the sum of the addendums of mating gears, and since mating gears must have the same diametral pitch, that tells us that the working depth is equal to 1 over P for the first gear plus 1 over P for the second gear or 1 half of an inch. The working depth of course being as the teeth interpenetrate each other's pitch circles, that's the depth from the addendum to the clearance. The second thing that we wanted to get in this problem is the base circle diameter. The base circle diameter is the diameter of the circle off which the involute curve is generated for the given gear. And as we mentioned, when you cut a gear, the base circle is defined. And we have a nice equation for that which is in your notes and we used in class. The radius of the base circle is equal to the radius of the pitch circle times the cosine of the pressure angle. Now fortunately we already figured out up here the diameter of the pitch circle so that tells us that the radius of the base circle for this particular instance is 6 over 2 times the cosine of the pressure angle, 20 degrees. So, 3 times the cosine of 20 gives me a pitch radius of 2.8191 inches. Therefore, the diameter of my base circle, which is just 2 times the base, thank you, the base radius, clear that out, 2.8191 one inches 
multiply it by 2, and it's 5.6382 inches. Take a pause for a second, this is about to get noisy here in my house, and we'll continue this momentarily.